Okay, so today we're going to go over a topic that uh, always strikes a nerve with me, and that is any repair issues related to leak testing on a scope. And I'm going to try to put this in a very relatable fashion for everyone and explain what we deal with from time to time with customers who just don't understand uh, the importance of leak testing. And leak testing basically keeps fluid out of your scope. You know, if you find a leak, that scope needs to be sent in as soon as possible for repair. And the longer that that moisture sits in the scope, the more damage it can cause. And I try to use an example that's relatable. Um, you've got your laptop, you spill water on your laptop. You blot it up and try to soak up all the water and it works for a little bit. And then you notice that the keys on your keyboard aren't working properly. But if you plug an external keyboard in, then your laptop functions, but it's obviously not really a laptop at that point. So you take it to your IT guy. <clears throat> he disassembles it. He you know, dries it out to the best of his ability if there's any residual moisture in there and replaces the keyboard, uh, tests it, and says, okay, your laptop's ready, come get it. And when you come to get it, uh, you go to turn it on and now there's nothing. Now, reason for that, um, depending on how long it took you to get it in, there's, you know, corrosion or other things going on within the laptop. And despite his best efforts, you know, he can't foresee where all the connections, all the corrosion, <clears throat> everything else is on the, uh, on the laptop and, you know, prevent it from dying. So most reasonable people would understand that's just part of the hazards of getting water in an electronic device and um, not go back at the IT guy and say, okay, you owe me a new laptop. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with scopes, um, with the issues that we sometimes encounter, uh, people don't think the same way. And we're going to go through some things here real quickly. So, you know, this is our bending section. We've got our leak tester attached. We're going to go ahead and put some pressure in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sit there and, and watch that leak test for a few minutes while we talk about some other things. So this is a bending section, obviously off of a much larger scope, but I did that mainly just so you can see all the little junctions, all the little connections for uh, the rivets, for the joints, to make it make those angles that needs to be done for uh, operating the, the scope. Now, when you're not doing leak testing on a regular basis, like you should be, this is what happens when we get the scope. We take off the bending rubber, and there's already signs of corrosion. And what you're doing is you're taking the potential of this simple bending rubber repair, uh, around $300. Now, you're having to replace or, or uh, refurbish the bending section, and that price is getting driven up. Now, here's another one. Uh, oddly enough, all three of these pictures are from the same customer. And you can see here we've got such corrosion that some of the pieces of the bending section are actually missing in the rivets. So now we're talking an angulation overhaul and a bending section replacement. And depending on the scope, that drives the price up much higher. There's another one, a different scope. Uh, and you can actually see here these are the angulation cables in the scope. And if you've got rust here, more than likely you've got rust there, so you're replacing everything. The problem which, that you have when you are working with uh, fiber scopes is you get fluid in the fiber scope and you have uh, potential damage to the image. You'll have what they call web stains where it looks like a cobweb and sometimes those can be dried out, other times they can't, and it's just permanent to the scope. And then other times with, obviously, an electronic video scope, the problem that you run into is uh, quite literally the electronics having moisture in them, shorting out, causing corrosion, and quite frankly, depending on how long that moisture has been on the scope, just things that we can't foresee despite our best efforts that um, will destroy the scope. And, you know, it's the the thing that we need to do is train staff on you know leak testing make sure that it's done after every procedure keep those repair costs low for you and keep the the scopes in your hand you know we're still sitting here around 200 psi 
we're going to go ahead and release the pressure off of that. That way it doesn't stay in the scope and cause problems. And then we're going to disconnect <coughs> our leak tester. And then we've got our scope, you know, ready to go uh, and into a patient. And, you know, part of being a responsible partner for, you know, our customers is having to have serious heart-to-heart -heart conversations about these things and the importance of leak testing to save them money. We want to keep those repair costs low because that way you're, you know, doing procedures, you're generating revenue. We don't like to be the bearer of bad news. We don't want to tell you a scope is non-repairable because it's got fluid invasion and it basically ate the scope from the inside out. Uh, that doesn't make us money and you're not going to make any money and you've lost money on a valuable scope uh, that will no longer function because the procedure wasn't followed along the line. So these are all really important things that need to be taken into consideration. Make sure your staff is testing regularly and by regularly after every procedure before the scope is cleaned. That's all we've got for today. Hope you found it informative. Thank you very much.